this is an excellent option for you. You need things that bring you joy. Bread. Today I'm gonna to show you a delicious breakfast that I have been currently obsessing over for months now, and it is so good, it's so basic. It's an upgrade on everything that you love. So when it comes to weight loss, I know that most people think you cannot eat bread. I'm here to tell you that for many reasons, you are wrong. <laughs> you can eat a little bit of bread, although there's something called calorie density. And calorie density is basically the number of calories that are in a given weight of food. I'm gonna show you two bread products that I love. Now, you can save the bread consumption for like a treat on the weekend. I personally love bread. I want to eat it every single day, and it is definitely one of my starches of choice. So sourdough is a great option. Here is just one example of a sourdough bread that is minimal in ingredients. It says no artificial preservatives. I try not to eat too many preservatives, and if I do, I'm gonna really enjoy those preservatives, you know, like a McDonald's hamburger or like, you know, like an Oreo cookie or something. So I'm going to toast myself a nice, gorgeous piece of sourdough. Gut health experts recommend that we actually do consume sourdough. What's good for gut health is also good for my brain. So for anybody who suffers from like, you know, chronic mild depression, it might be a good thing for you to eat some sourdough bread. I'm just saying, because if the gut health experts say that, then I'm down. Now this is another type of bread that you may mistake in as cardboard. <laughs> However, it's not cardboard. So it is a brand called Ezekiel from a company called Food for Life. This is a sprouted grain bread. It is flourless. As described in the Holy Scriptures verse, take also unto thee wheat and barley and beans and lentils and millet and spelt and put them in one vessel and make bread of it. Ezekiel 4.9, all right. There's 19 grams of whole grains. It's low glycemic, it's non-GMO, it's USDA organic. It's a complete plant protein certified organic i mean it's got all of the things it says it's natural it's no preservatives i mean this package of this bread contains all the things that you want to see however what i've learned from nutritionists like jeff novick is that you should never believe what's on the packaging <laughs> we got to go straight to the back and we got to look at this stuff even though the packaging looks nice and it's got all of the boom 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 looks healthy, it's in the healthy section. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to create health within our bodies. In this case, it looks really good. <laughs> so you might wonder, what is this cardboard bread? I will never forget the time that um, my husband Kreider brought this bread home. He used to work in the health food store many years ago and he knows a lot about this kind of food. I thought, oh my goodness, why would you bring cardboard and tell me that it's bread. But I thought, you know what? <clears throat> Have an open mind, let's try it. Let's check out this cardboard bread. You will often see it in the freezer section. And this is what this looks like. And yep, yep, yep. What I love about this is I can just leave it easily in the freezer without it getting moldy or anything or growing old. And I always have it available when I wanna eat it. Pop that into our little toaster oven. I like sprouted things because apparently when we sprout food, there is an amazing magical world of nutrition that gets unlocked in these very powerful seeds. There's all this nutrition that is activated when things are sprouted and then I'm going to consume them and that nutrition is going to be flourishing inside of my body and it's going to be feeding our good gut bugs and those good gut bugs are going to strengthen our immunity. All of that strength is going to start flowing into our bloodstream, go up into our brains. We're just feeling good. Now, typically your girl loves her mayonnaise, <laughs> but I am doing my best to showcase how we can eat more whole plants in our lives. So less processed products and more whole plants. Why do we wanna eat whole plants? Because when we eat the whole plant, all of nature's power is locked inside her fruit. Yes, I've heard that all of the nutrients are bound to fiber and fiber is only found in plants. There's no fiber in animal-based foods. I'm not saying that you can never eat animal-based foods. You're gonna eat what you wanna eat. But all I am saying is that if you want a healthy, delicious, satisfying, filling, highly nutritious meal or a snack, then you've come to the right place. We're gonna eat more plants. Let's Check this out, this is the moment of truth. Oh boy, it's always exciting to see what kind of avocado we are going to get. What do you think? Is it gonna be a good one? <gasps> Yay! I'm surprised with this one because it feels pretty soft. Avocado is a high fat plant food. Now, 
in my case, I don't really care. <laughs> I'm gonna make this avocado toast that is gonna blow your mind. And the secret ingredient to blowing your mind is all of the things. It's bread, it's fat, it's salt, and we're gonna top it off with these beauties. Yes, broccoli sprouts. Our sourdough is lightly toasted. Oh yeah, I wish you could see the steam coming out of this baby. So within the book, I have learned that we absolutely need carbs. And the key to that is to think about starch. So for people who are either vegans or plant-based or they just wanna eat healthier or whatever the case may be, a lot of people who first transition and start to eat more plant-based or let's just say eating more vegetables in general, because <laughs> it's something that not a lot of us do very often. A big mistake that a lot of people make is they think, oh, in order for me to eat healthier, I have to eat like more salads, more leaves, or what we're going to call non-starchy vegetables. That's what the McDougals call it. They basically look at the world of plants and there's starch and then there's non-starch. <laughs> Let's just keep it real basic. One of the most important things that I have ever learned from them is that starch is a key to maintaining this way of eating for the long term. Because without that starch, you're gonna go hungry, you're gonna get hangry, life is gonna be rough. So have starch, be satiated, be full, be nourished, be happy, and live a great life. In this case, our starch is our bread. And for me, just thinking about like, flavors and joy in eating. In order for us to have excellent food, and this applies to anything that we eat, there are certain components in every single dish that make it amazing. So you've got your fat, you've got your salt, you've got a little bit of sugar or sweetness, and you may have a little bit of sour. And then as a topper, you might have your spice. What is that woman? Mm. Anyway, her name is, uh, I don't know. She's a beautiful chef. I absolutely love the way she cooks, and she has an awesome show. I'll link it in the description because it's really inspiring and I get inspired by all kinds of different chefs cooking all kinds of different cuisines because I have a huge appetite and I love to eat and I just love food. She does a really great job in just simplifying how to make every single meal delicious. So we've got those components. I'm a fat and salt girl. You might be like a sugar person, but for me, it's the fat and salt combo that is just it brings me life and it brings me so much joy. For the ultimate in weight loss, if you are really impatient and you have a lot to lose and you wanna lose it now, <laughs> then skip the avocado because the avocado is a high fat plant food. What I have realized though, is that many of these weight loss doctors who also concentrate on optimal health may tell you to lay off the avocado. Absolutely true, it's a high fat food product. But for me personally, it's not about the quick wins necessarily. It's more so about the long-term win, the long-term sustainability, right? It's great if you lose 5, 10, 50, 100 pounds if you need to lose that, but is it awesome to just turn around and put that right back on? No. So for me, and for so many of us, the ultimate challenge is in sustaining good habits, right? My goal is to show you exactly how to start slimming down. And we'll do this one meal at a time. So this is a very basic avocado toast, hella upgraded with the addition of amazing broccoli sprouts. We have our sourdough. We've got our cardboard bread. <laughs> I know, I shouldn't call it the cardboard bread because it doesn't taste like cardboard. So typically I love me my veganaise, but I'm going to stay away from that because it's pretty much a very highly processed product made with oil. And so instead of the oil, I'm going to swap it out for this beautiful avocado. This is a whole food plant sort. It's still going to be higher in fat compared to me not using this. But what I have found is for me to sustain this healthy eating habit and pattern, I do need to definitely add joy to my life. Now I'm gonna have a piece of the Ezekiel bread, but I'm also going to have a piece of this sourdough. Now dose matters, so if you don't want to, if you wanna have a little bit of the fat because you love flavor and joy the way I do, if you wanna just limit the amount of avocado that you put on, you can always do that. That is a smart strategy. And in doing that, you're also going to limit the amount of total calories that you are eating. 
In our method of weight loss, girls and boys, we will do no such thing as counting calories or weighing or measuring our food. I only do that if I'm doing like the fasting mimicking diet and that is it because that is no way to live. In order to add more joy to our life, we're going to add a little bit of salt to our food. It really brings out the natural flavor of food. And so it is an absolutely necessary component to delicious, yummy cooking and eating. So it's just a little bit. If you have really high sodium intake, you're probably eating a lot of processed foods. Now I do enjoy heat, so I'm gonna add in a little bit of chili flakes to this. So we got that going, and we got that going. And then I also love a little bit of freshness. So a key component is to eat raw food for weight loss. So let's do what the good doctor recommends and add that into our toast. Okay, so just literally getting all that plant goodness into us, yum. Turn around, turn around. Now, I am also obsessed with pepper, so here we go. Let's pepper it up. And then to top it off, oops, we are going to add in our delicious sprouts. Now, I like to go a little bit overboard with the amount of sprouts, I realize, but you know, I just cannot help myself. You know what I'm going to do? I am going to harvest my onion sprouts a little bit early. Now, onion sprouts are real potent, so you don't need a ton of them. I will just lightly sprinkle them on to my sourdough version. And I absolutely eat the little seeds that did not end up sprouting because they're still so good. Pop this back onto my sprouting tray to keep going. So this is our broccoli sprouts on our cardboard toast, which does not taste like cardboard. <laughs> it tastes really good. And then here is our sourdough version with our onion sprouts. Yes. All right, friend. So we've made our toast. The one on sourdough, it is so good. You are not gonna believe how good it is. I know it doesn't look like much and it looks actually like healthy and probably not tasty, <laughs> but it's so good. And then we've got our Ezekiel bread, which I absolutely love. So much nutrition in there. And it doesn't even taste like whole wheat brown bread. You know, like that brown flavor, it doesn't taste like that. So if you're not into that flavor, then try the Ezekiel. You might love it. You're getting all this sprouted goodness and it is going to surprise and delight you. So cheers. I mean, look at this. Look at this beauty. And it doesn't look like much, but you've got the starchiness from your bread. You've got the delicious mm, mouth feel of the smooth avocado. You've got the freshness of the tomato and the sprouts. Oh my gosh. Whatever brain neurons are firing off when I eat these sprouts, that's what it's all about. Mmm. 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 So good. Now, because I know the sourdough is gonna taste better, we're gonna eat this guy first. Oh man, that is so delicious. Why is it so good? Mm. <laughs> this is your avocado toast elevated to the hundredth degree, right? Mm. You need that little hit of salt to really bring out the flavors of the avocado and the tomato. My goodness, it's so good. Mm. <laughs> There's so many different textures going on and the sprouts were chilled in the fridge. So I've got the coolness against the warmth of the toasted bread. Yum. I've tried to eat this without the fat component. No, unacceptable. Just kidding. It's still really good, but <clears throat> without the fat component, this is like maybe a three and a half out of five versus with the fat component. This is a five out of five. Oh yeah. 
Mm, so good. Is my shirt on backwards? Now, do I feel guilty for eating bread? I don't feel guilty for eating anything, and neither should you. But I only say that because most of the food that I eat is really on point, and it is optimal nutrition, because I eat a lot of whole plants. So anytime that I'm not eating whole plants and I'm eating something just nasty and delicious, I fully enjoy it. Wow. The onion sprouts are real pro tip. Very oniony and so good. If you don't like tomatoes, try cucumbers. Crunchy, cold, delicious. If you love cucumbers and tomatoes, try them both. Might get a little slippery though. And so this is my ultimate way of having a breakfast, having a really delicious, impeccable snack, or sometimes, actually right now, it's lunchtime. So this is like my lunch part one. <laughs> part two, after I run a couple of errands, might look like this all over again, a repeat. You can always buy sprouts at the store. Make sure that they don't look slimy. Make sure that they smell fresh. And you will know, you just know. Your body will tell you. So even if you're on a weight loss journey and you're like me and you're not going to abide by the rules 100% in terms of avoiding all high fat plant foods, this is a way that I stay happy, that I want to continue on this path and it's just so much more sustainable for me. So I'm not a black and white girl. I am all about the shades of gray. What works for me is that I absolutely have to have my moments of joy and deep pleasure that sounds weird, but you know what I mean. This is deep pleasure. Hot dang. I want to empower you. I want to help you learn and understand food so you can be well. If you are unwell right now, we're gonna drop the un part and we're gonna transition you to being well, perhaps to be thriving, but it's interesting how every once in a while in our lives, we are hit with some crazy ass news that recalibrates us into identifying and focusing on what's important. And not only why we are doing this, but the more important question is who you are doing this for. Our why in terms of weight loss would be you want to drop some weight because you know that it's going to be healthier. But when temptation comes creeping up and rolling around as it does multiple times every single day, your why might fly out the window in about two seconds. If you want something like conviction, that's what's going to take you across the finish line and fuel a very powerful journey towards your goal. In order to have that conviction, you have to answer that question, who? Who are you doing this for? Are you doing this for your future self so you can attract your perfect life partner and live happily ever after? Good for you. That is an amazing reason and amazing conviction. Or if you're doing this for your family members because you love them and you know that your time is not up yet, then it's time to fight. But it's time to fight with glorious, delicious food. For my instance, and I'm just your average girl here. There ain't nothing special about me. But if I can do this, and eat a bunch of plants most of the time and still have a few bad habits and still eat just horrifyingly unhealthy meals every once in a while. And let me quantify that for you. We're talking every other week, but every other meal is just flourishing with a bunch of beautiful old plants that are delicious. So am I gonna add in a little bit of fat? Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Why? Because I wanna live a really good life, that's why. I want my taste buds to be super happy. I like to be pleasured. No, don't say that. So here we've got our sprouts. I highly encourage you to try to grow them at home. It is so fun to do this. Uh, yeah. These are the broccoli seeds that are just beginning to sprout. And these are the onion seeds, the black ones. Aren't they so pretty? And they're sprouting like that. And it's so easy to do. Anybody can do this. If you know how to like, pour water into a jar, then you know how to do this. So check out the video if you wanna learn how to do this at home. And I will see you soon.